Hey, Lindsay, are you a coffee drinker? Michelle, am I a coffee drinker? Yes, of course. I drink a lot of coffee. How about you? I do, but I don't think that I drink as much as you drink. (laughs) (laughs) Well, our listeners will have to watch today's episode to find out exactly how much each of us drinks each day. Guys, today we're talking about coffee and how it can be the ultimate connector in English to start interesting conversations with people all over the world. Right, Michelle? Definitely, definitely. We will give you conversation topics. You're going to hear about our coffee habits and our experiences with caffeine. It's going to be a super fun episode. I'm excited for this one today, guys. So enjoy the episode. Yes, and go ahead and hit subscribe on this YouTube channel to get more videos like this one. Michelle, let's get into it. All right. Hey, Michelle, how are you doing today? Excited to see you on video over on YouTube, right, Michelle? Hey, yes, good to see you, Lindsay. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Actually, I heard we were talking about coffee today, and coffee is one of my favorites. You know, right here, I have a mug. Actually, can you see it? Can you see that mug? One second. Let's see. Yes. Oh, is that a three keys? Mine? Yeah, we yeah, it's so crazy. We actually had a student that made these, uh, an IELTS student in our IELTS course, and he sent them to us. Our lovely oh student. Oh, uh, it's so funny, but yeah, so that's what that is. Clearly, I have a large collection of coffee cups. What about you? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I have a lot of coffee mugs as well, and uh, yeah. Then they, I don't know. I feel like the dishwasher doesn't get to them enough, though. I don't know. They always oh. get kind of gross. Do you have that problem? I don't, but I noticed a few years ago that there started being the the double size mugs and that's trouble for me just because, you know, they're like twice as big as this. They're the most common kind now that you find in the store. And I end up drinking so much coffee just because the mugs are so huge. (laughs) Oh, that's funny. That's really funny. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So yeah, today we're going to be talking about coffee, right? So I mean, I know, like, how much do you drink a day, Lindsay? I know you're quite a coffee drinker. I guess I probably drink like, uh, okay, are we talking about measurement cups or cups, like cups of coffee or measured cups of coffee? Like, which do I have to reveal? Because it changes the deal. (laughs) Give it to me in ounces if you can. In what? In what? In ounces if you can. Oh, oh, geez. I don't know. I guess it's about six cups of coffee, if I'm going to be <gasps> honest. <laughs> Whoa. I know it's pretty bad, Michelle, but it only amounts to two cups. It only amounts to two actually pouring of the thing. You know what I mean? Like it's oh, six yeah. measured cups because this is probably more than a cup is what I'm saying. Right. Right. right, right? right. Like this is probably a little more than a cup. I'm not a scientist, but <laughs> what about you? <laughs> how much do you drink? Do you think? I drank uh, one cup a day and I know I have, I have a Keurig machine, which I know people have mixed feelings about, but it's easy for me. Um, and I drink exactly 10 to 12 ounces every day. Okay. So now I feel really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel bad. Dan, is, Dan drinks so much coffee. I'm, I'm, I, I, there's a reason we'll get more into it. Why I don't really drink that much coffee. Um, so, yeah, oh, I mean, uh, that's that's kind of my situation with coffee, but we'll get into that uh, into that more in a second. But, Lindsay, what do we want to tell our listeners about before we get going? Well, we just want you guys to know that you can find your fluency score, right? We have this quiz that we designed. It's available online. You can get it at allearsenglish.com slash fluency score, one word, and go and answer seven questions and you will get your fluency score. Whether you are 50% fluency, 65% fluency, or 80% fluency, and then you'll get resources on how to bump up to that next level. Michelle, it's so cool. That is awesome, guys. So go on over and get that allearsenglish.com slash fluency score. Yes, so, that's it. <laughs> let's talk not about coffee, but let's talk more about the caffeine part for a second. I mean, how does caffeine affect you, Lindsay? Or do you ever drink decaf? I do if I try to have a coffee after six or so, but that's rare that I would want one at that time. But if I do go for that, I would try to have a decaf coffee most of the time. Caffeine, how does it affect me? Is that what you're asking, Michelle? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
<laughs> no, I honestly don't think it affects me that much. Either that or I'm very non-self-aware because yeah. I don't really feel that much of a difference unless I've already developed like a bar where I'm used to it and I just act crazy all the time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. No, I don't think you act crazy all the time. I'm not with you all the time, but you seem you seem calm. I seem normal. Okay. What about you, Michelle? How does caffeine affect you? You know what? I don't... I. It's funny. I, I'm not sure which comes first. I mean, because you know, like I have some trouble sleeping. Yeah. So I'm pretty strict yeah. about what time I cut off caffeine, but I've been doing that for a really long time. So, but what okay. I will say, so I only have it in the morning. I'm really careful about it. But recently um, I did add a little bit more coffee. Um, it wasn't just, this is so I don't know why we were doing this, but I had the carrot. I had like my cup of coffee and then I yeah. put in extra coffee. Um, and okay. I, <laughs> it was, first of all, that's only for emergencies and I stir it in. Um, yeah. and it was terrible. I noticed that my heart was racing and I almost, I felt sick. Um, now that I think was because it was way too much and overload. Um, but I needed, yeah, I needed to drink water. I ate pasta. I like, I felt like absolutely sick from it, like dizzy. And how, so, how much more coffee did you have? Like how far over the line did you go? I don't know. Just like a few heaping tea, teaspoons. Interesting. Um, wow. Yeah. Okay. So I, yeah. I had that, I had that happen a couple of days and now like, so again, I, I don't know if like the normal amount affects me that much, but when I overdo it, especially all in one, that was probably the, where it was like, no, no, you're not supposed to do that. But I, have Thanks you ever me. had something like that with caffeine? Um, for me, it really depends on what I've eaten that day. And sometimes yeah. caffeine will hit me the wrong way <clears throat> and I'll get a little shaky. So I will say that will happen if I don't have like a good base of food in my stomach. That's what yeah. it seems like is happening. And right. I get a little bit shaky and I racy a little bit. Yeah. That rarely happens, but it does happen sometimes. But if yeah. I follow my normal routine, like I eat a good breakfast and then I have a coffee, I feel totally normal. Yeah. So yeah. I don't okay. know. It's weird. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. I, I actually, I found after this happened, I found an article about uh, anxiety and uh, okay. caffeine. So, and it was mm -hmm. after this experience and the article is from Huffington Post. It's our coffee and caffeine making your anxiety worse. worse. Oh, so this no. is by Kelsey Borison and this was from November 3rd, 2020. Um, so I was interested in this article because I really noticed that it made me a lot more anxious in that moment. Interesting. Um, Interesting. So, yeah. And, and yeah. it talks about, you know, how people handle coffee differently. Like, so for example, Dan can drink a coffee at night right before bed. I mean, it's unbelievable. And he will That's have no incredible. trouble sleeping. I'm afraid to have hot chocolate at night. I'm afraid to eat ice cream at night or now I'm afraid to have any, any like chocolate dessert whatsoever because I'm so, I have trouble sleeping and I don't want to mess it up even more. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. It really does affect everyone differently. And I wonder about our listeners because, you know, I personally had my first cup of coffee in Colombia. I never drank mm. coffee before then, but when I was traveling in South America, we went to a cafe and all the locals were having it. It was a very local place. And I got into the habit through travel. And I know mm. there's a huge yeah. coffee culture in obviously like Western Europe, uh, Italy, right? Espresso yeah. culture, Colombia, even Japan, there's a coffee culture that I discovered when I was there. So I wonder what our listeners would have to say about this. I feel like this is a universal topic, Michelle, definitely, right? Definitely, definitely, exactly. And Dan drinks so much coffee that my son like is like obsessed with it too. He'll say, want a coffee, want a coffee. And like, he like <laughs> wants to try and drink it. And even like, so like the other day we got a coffee from a shop and you know, he, he had like the paper cup and my son just started screaming, like started crying and screaming. And it's because he wants to carry the cup. He doesn't drink it, but he That's likes, so he likes the feeling. So then Dan had to like drink his espresso, like really, really fast. And then he had to get him the cup so he could walk around with it. And he was like, what a coffee? What? It's like so funny. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we're starting him young. No, kids are so funny. Oh, you know. They want to mimic oh, their parents, right? They want to do exactly what their parents are doing. That's so cute. That's so cute. Right. It's pretty <laughs> funny. Yeah. So, but this article talks about how, um, well, I'm going to, I'm going to read one quote. Okay. So it's caffeine okay. is thought to trigger the release of adrenaline, right? The fight or flight yeah. hormone, which could be contributing to those feelings of anxiousness. So, and it mentions if you're somebody with anxiety, if you have an anxiety disorder, um, you actually may be m affected more by caffeine. So um, the other mm -hmm. thing that's hard is that they talk about how depending on where you got your coffee from, do you really know how much caffeine you're getting, Lindsay? No, that's a terrifying thing. Yeah. Um, and I also like dark roast. And I don't know, a lot of people say that dark roast is like the worst, is like the lowest quality of coffee because it's when the burn the the beans are over roasted. But I actually uh -huh. like that. I'm not sure if that has more caffeine or not. Maybe some of our listeners could correct me. Um, but we don't know. There's no label. When you go to the cafe, there's a cafe right across the street from my apartment, which is bad. And there's not like there's a label that says this amount of caffeine and you've gone over just like we have with sugar, right? I mean, I monitor my sugar. I don't go over, you know, 20 or 30 grams of sugar a day because you're not oh, supposed wow. to. Uh, yeah. Well, you shouldn't, right? In a day, women shouldn't have more than I think it's 26 grams of sugar. And in our diet, in our culture, things have massive amounts of sugar. Everything. Um, sugar. So Everything. I'm really careful about that. But then you think about caffeine. I don't have any way to know. That's the crazy part. Right. I mean, and that's why for me, I'm also, I'm so strict that I don't even, I hardly have a coffee out anymore. Like I pretty much just have mine at home and, yeah. and like, that's it. And it's not even, it's also, it's because I don't want too much, but I also don't want too little. Like I, I know what it takes <laughs> to make me feeling good, to make it me feel good. Like it sounds like it's an actual drug for you, Michelle. <laughs> you have to do your drug in secret. Like <laughs> <laughs> I don't want I do too much. I, don't want too little. I need the right dose, the exactly right dose. <laughs> you sound oh, like an addict. Oh my god! But I this... gotta call you out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. Oh my god, guys! Wow. Okay, now I'm embarrassed. No, but it, but it is true. It's true. Well, I, I'm it not happened... drinking six cups of coffee a day, so it's okay. Right. I should and talk. I should right. want to and talk. That... I just, I have it down to a science. What does that mean, Lindsay? That's a good expression. I like that. It's down to a science. You have created a formula that works for you and you just repeat it kind of ad nauseum right. <laughs> right? every day. And it's always exactly that way. So you can't deviate from it because it's what works for you. Yeah, right. for sure. Yeah. Right, yes. right, right. Exactly. And also there's a lot of sources for caf of caffeine. Like, yeah, people like innocently have, you know, all this like dessert and chocolate stuff and that's, that's caffeine too. So yeah, yeah that's um, true. A lot of times chocolate has caffeine or espresso beans will be on a, a piece of cake or something, chocolate espresso yeah. cake, and you have caffeine in there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Exactly. And it actually, the article talked about keeping like a journal or a diary and, and putting yeah. in your anxious feelings, uh, like, like, and caffeine and kind yeah. of monitoring, like, do you feel, you know, how do you feel depending on how much caffeine you have? Lindsay, is that something you would ever do? Yeah. That makes sense. It makes sense. You know, I honestly, if I were, I do now that I think about it, when I, if I'm going to go give a big presentation or have an important meeting, I will avoid having a cup of coffee before that because I'm worried that it'll trigger more anxiety. I don't think mm -hmm. it does, but I don't let it happen. Like I'll avoid it just so that it doesn't happen. If that makes sense. Or then you might have to go to the, you might have to go to the bathroom. Too. <laughs> True. Yeah. That's also not very convenient. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, in an odd way, this also just makes me think of life, not just with caffeine take because intake, because I think it can be easy to do too much of something, right? We think yes. we need more of the things we lack all the time, but sometimes we can overdo it. So that's something that we could talk about another time, but just kind of a random thought that I had in there. Yeah, it's very true. It's very true, Michelle. And I love this topic just because it's so it's such a great way to st to talk to a native speaker. Many of our listeners, they oh, might do yeah. a language exchange in a Starbucks or in a cafe where they're meeting with a native speaker and a good opener for a conversation would be asking them about their coffee habits, right? Right. 
And yeah. Exactly. Oh my gosh. People love to talk about, I mean, look, Lindsay, we're having so much fun with this discussion. Oh, you sound like it's a drug. You sound you. like this an is... addict. And then, yeah, we have, like, <laughs> we're like, we're laughing. It's like, it's a, it's a fun kind of, it's a fun topic. And um, yeah. to share information maybe about your cultures, coffee, uh, things like that. It's just a lot of fun things to connect over because I think everybody, even if you hate coffee, right? There are people who hate coffee. My mom hates coffee. And even those people would like to talk about it. Ugh, I hate coffee. Coffee so much. They do. People tend to have very strong opinions about coffee because usually the people that hate coffee will be tea drinkers. And I'm personally not a big yep. tea fan. I find it to be yeah. kind of a letdown. But there's actually so <laughs> many more kinds of tea around the world than, than coffee. So people do have a lot to say about this topic. So guys, make sure you're able to go into it. I mean, do we want to do a role play for our listeners here to show them how to have this kind of conversation or what, Michelle? Sure. What should we, well, do? we were going to teach quickly a couple of uh, words uh, before we do that. So the first word is jittery, right? Which uh -huh. means yep, we talked about that. around mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And then nervous energy. Yeah, Lindsay. exactly. And then nervous energy, right? Yeah. So the idea of right, having high right, energy right. because you are nervous, right? So nervous energy. I get, I understand that feeling, right? Your heart's racing. Mm -hmm. Yep. For sure. And then caffeine intake, which we mentioned before, which is how much caffeine you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So it's a chunk, guys. It's, you know, something intake, sugar intake, uh, fat intake, right? Caffeine intake. These are all chunks that we can use when we talk about food and nutrition. Okay, cool. Absolutely. So here we are at a coffee shop. Lindsay, you want to get started? All right. So this comment looks filling or it looks fitting. I think I'll get a triple espresso. <laughs> really, Lindsay? You seem kind of jittery already. I know. It's just that I'm exhausted. I've already had three cups today. Yeah, but you really should watch your caffeine intake. You're right. Uh, I do have a lot of nervous energy right now. Meanwhile, I'm like jittery, right? I'm like kind of, yeah. We have to be self-aware when it comes to these moments. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So let's go through it. Uh, so I said you seem kind of jittery, right? You're kind of moving around a little bit or feel right, like, like seem of, like very uh... nervous. Other. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then you said, yeah, but you should really watch your caffeine intake. Again, guys, that is a chunk. Okay, cool. Absolutely. And then you said, I do have a lot of nervous energy right now. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. What a fun topic. Lindsay, what do we want to leave our listeners with? Well, like I said, guys, caffeine and coffee, well, coffee and tea, like these social drinks are the things that bring us together as human beings, right? We know that you guys have opinions on coffee. Some of you are coffee drinkers, some of you are tea drinkers, but it's a great way to start a conversation. So anytime you're in a cafe with a native speaker or anywhere on the street, going out for a walking date, whatever it is, you can strike up this conversation. It's the ultimate connector, right, Absolutely. Michelle, between oh. human beings. So you need the language for it. Absolutely. I love it. Oh my gosh, Lindsay, thank you so much for chatting about this with me today. And uh, let's keep each other posted on our caffeine intake. But guys, remember, all right. head over to allusingenglish.com slash fluency score to get your fluency score. All right. Sounds good, Michelle. Talk to you soon. Take care. Right, bye.